Okay, which of the services are you not happy with? You are not happy with the promises? You are not happy the way you are standing? You are not happy with God that made the promises? Uh, you are not happy with the choir that sang the song? <laughs> eh? The way you clap, as if you are... <laughs> Hallelujah. The way some of you behave, eh? you carry too much of what you are going through. Too much of your... Whatever, whatever you are going through. You know what I'm doing? Hey, whatever it is. You know, you carry too much. Until you come to a place in life where you don't look like what you are going through. That's right. You have not started working by faith. If people see you and they can read what you are going through, yeah. that means something is under. Are you hearing me? The word of God is under, your problem is on top. Yeah. People should not see you and be able to discern easily. You know what I mean? Glory be to God forever. Yeah. Uh, they greet you. You say, uh, do, mm, mm, mm. you are sounding like a frog. <laughs> you don't do that. Glory be to God forever. Yeah. Yeah. We constantly affirm who we are in Christ. Yes. We constantly affirm the power of God. Yes. We constantly affirm the goodness of God. Yes. We constantly affirm the faithfulness of God. Yes. We may not understand it all, but our faith will not shake. Right. Because a God that you can totally discern and decipher is not God. Mm, because it's the glory of God to hide himself. It's also the honor of men to search him out. Glory be to God forever, man. So if you're thinking that you can just figure out everything, no, no, no. But one thing you can do, you can always walk by faith. You can always walk by faith. And the Bible says concerning Abraham, he did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, because he was fully persuaded that he that promised is also able to perform. That you can be your own demonstration. Glory be to God forever, man. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the supply of your spirit. Amen. Thank you as we take your word this morning. Thank you for answering the question in somebody's heart. Thank you because somebody will live here with a clear cut direction. Amen. A word from your presence. Amen. Comfort. Amen. Help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your name, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, before you take your seat, greet your neighbor warmly. Look at what they are wearing, something they're looking, and commend it. The green they are wearing, tell them they look nice. <laughs> yeah. Glory be to God. Good morning, Mr. Chiwo. How are you doing? It's nice seeing you again. Yeah, the last time you came out, you were single. Now you are totally married. Completely married. Fully married. But we're happy to see you. God bless you. How's your husband doing? Very well. But I'm sure when you come nice again, we are the children too. Uh, we'll be asking, uh, we'll be asking gradually. <laughs> Okay, please let's celebrate my sister, Mrs. Chingo, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get into the word of God for about three hours. Eh? Praise God. Why are you laughing? Can't you take the word of God for three hours? Please tell everybody at the foyer to come in. Please, eh, anybody that has not come to church at this time doesn't deserve to be welcomed. Ah, service starts at nine. Somebody will come to church at after ten. Then you will tell we will now put all our protocol outside greeting you for what? For coming late? I beg, go sit down. Well, you think where we are? This is a political rally. You no, know, I don't send. If you come late, they should lock the door against you. Go to the alpha hall now. I mean, all these people that are serving God to the detriment of their spirit. I don't get it. You're serving God. Somebody is coming to church lady. You now put your destiny on hold. Welcome you a late comer. What for? Yeah, I don't get all those kind of nonsense services. 
Let them go to Alpha. Maybe there's another hall. Go to Alpha Hall. There's also another hall here now. And here we put we put a uh, we put screen there. Watch screen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, uh-huh. Or should I sound like uh, that boy, that boy that cracks joke? Hallelujah. Have you heard this? Uh, I know you will know him. <laughs> I just trick you. See, I didn't. Hallelujah. Okay, please, quickly. <laughs> I've forgotten my text. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember. Okay, I remember now. Okay, first Kings. <laughs> the, the way you are looking, you are looking at it's not possible. Eh? No, no. I, that's what you're, I know your mind. I think, no, no, Pastor, I cannot forget. But it's true. <laughs> All of you are unbelievers. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read two portions of scriptures. And then I'll be fast because I, I have limited time. I know why you all came. Some of you have not been to church in two years. As soon as you have, yeah, as soon as I've heard of a message, you, you came. That's why you came. That is why you came. Jesus said you came because you ate bread. I know you. So we should, that's not for us to be deceiving ourselves. That's why you came. You, when was the last time I saw you in church? <laughs> Someone that we know each other. Let's go, let's leave, let's leave that alone. You just had a good alibi. That. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go on, let's go. Look, let's, let's, let's just move, let's move on. Then, uh, then what? <laughs> then Elijah, you like okay, sorry. <laughs> then Elijah the Tishbite, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor, <laughs> nor rain this year except at my word. Uh, those, and you know, that came to pass. Didn't it, didn't it come to pass? For three and a half, half years, didn't rain. Uh, that should tell you the, about our prophets in Nigeria. They will predict this way. They will predict this way. They will predict this way. Idiots. Let's go on. No, no, no. It's also those of you that follow them. You are more idiot than them. If it's either the word of God is or is not the word of God. Ah. I've been looking at me. I don't apologize. I've been old. I've got born again since 1983. One boy that was not born then cannot come and be confusing me. I was born again before they were born. Can you come and tell me uh, if you want to say, God doesn't know things. If you do this, if you don't pray enough, if you pray enough. If it doesn't happen, because we didn't pray enough. If God wants to do something, he doesn't need your prayers. Yes, sir. He doesn't need something. All this one that you just predict, I'm predicting. Leave that alone. You hear me? And the foolishness of it all. You think God wants to do something, he will now put it on the table. You think it's for nothing for that God hides himself? You think he doesn't know the name of, of, of Mary when he says a virgin shall give birth? Because once he mentioned Mary, Satan will come after. Because the Satan will be looking for the seed of the woman from the beginning. So God will now come and tell everybody. That on the day of swearing in, they, they will now come and arrest men that won't sworn in and everything and put it on the table. And all of you are here. God is stupid. If you have a plan, will you give to the enemy? Why are you not thinking? So do you think now they cannot go if it's if it really gonna happen? They can't go and do the swearing in an American embassy. They can't do it or they can't do the swearing in on the 27th, two days before. There's no question that says the swearing must be on the 29th. Once you place your card on the table, Satan will tamper with it. Satan has no power over some of you. It's what you said that Satan is working on. Many things will work for you until you told somebody. And when you mention that thing, that thing will never work again. Because you have revealed some things must come to maturity before you declare them. Don't look, don't disturb me. <laughs> we fighting ordinary people self. You don't the best form of attack is surprise. You will now come and place everything on the table. How? Glory be to God forevermore. 
where did the problem of David start from? From the moment that, don't you know what, the, the, what, 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 what that prophet said? Samuel, he said, go and not king. He said, if Saul heard, he would kill me. If Saul heard, I'm going to, he would kill me. You know what God told him? He said, when you get to the house of, of Jesse, don't tell them that you came to anoint a king. When you get to Bethlehem, tell them you have come to offer sacrifice. If God could have that started to conceal his plan, you think the same God, the same yesterday, today, and forever has changed his strategy? Why does God keep his asnas at the back side so that they are not too easily exposed? I, I don't know. See, in the prophecy, there's wisdom. I'm feeling hot, Jerry. Let me just say. Uh, that's, not, that's not why I came. I like to help young people because I see that a lot of you, you have zeal. You, are not, you don't have it together. And all what you call prophecies, when somebody says what you want to hear, that's your prophecy. <laughs> I'm sorry for this. When was the last time that God consulted you before he did what he wanted to do? So be the man that's about to finish right now. Didn't we pray that God, we don't want, he will not be there? The man's looking fresh and strong and now he's finished. <laughs> For eight years. I saw pastor that conduct burial ceremony. We do this. What has happened? What has happened? You know, finish. I beg, leave that way alone. Leave that way alone. We are being around. Let's go after what we are saying. Me, I just, anyway, Shadow, let me. I've told you, I remove my hand from politics. I'm probably interested. Yes, now. Even the, I, I told the platform where I did, you know, pastors. I, there's something I posted there. Since that time, about 24 pastors in this town, nobody has said anything on that platform since I posted what I posted. <laughs> Till today, nobody posted anything on that platform. Till today. I just threw one bomb there. Till today. <laughs> Till to now, nobody has said anything. I even thought they were going to abuse me. Nobody, nobody abused me. Nobody said anything. And since that time, I, everybody posting, posting, posting. I said, what is it now? We are not winning, so we are not preaching to people and everything. We are all becoming political pastors. What's all this nonsense? Before they came, God has spoken. When they are here, God has spoken. After they are gone, we are still going to be here. Let us stand on the promises. Let me go on. Verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, after he had prophesied that there would be funny, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, get away from here and turn eastward. Go towards Enugu. Okay. Hide in the brook chariot, which is in Naba. Okay. And flows toward Jordan. That's on the way to Krika. Okay, let's go. <laughs> it will be, <laughs> let's go. It will be that you shall drink from the brook. May you drink from the brook. Yeah. It is, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Go on. So he went and did according to the word of God, of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook chariot, which flows into Jordan. Next line. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Say amen to that. Amen. I may the Lord provide for you. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 13. Don't worry, don't be afraid. The more I read, the less I preach. Acts 13. I read from verse 1. And now in the church, there was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaem, it's not Niger, it's Niger. Uh-huh. God of everything, everything came from Nigeria. Uh-huh. The guy is black. That's the name for black, okay? Bloody nigger. Let's go. <laughs> Simeon was called nigger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaem, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and what? And Saul. Verse 2. 
As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Now, verse 3, the last verse, then, having fasted and prayed and, and laid hands on them, they sent them on their ways. I want to share something very small with you. I titled it, Indicators of a Shift. Critical Indicators of a Shift. When God is about to move you from one point to the other, I call it critical indicators of a shift. You know what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 2? It says you have come past this mountain long enough. It's time to break up and advance. NIV version. Please, sometimes we take for normal an aberration. We just keep going around in a circle. So long, we just keep going around. God sometimes may have to intervene to move you in the right direction. Say amen to that. Amen. And I'm praying for every one of you who seems stuck with life. May after this service be something happen to you amen. that will ginger you in the right direction amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have not been there where you are just marking time with life, where nothing is happening, where people that see you last year ask you what is going on, and your answer, so so, now so, uh, I've been there. We are for years. You can't even account for what your life. Just marking time. But right now, I just want to share with you something because you must learn to take initiatives with your life. Yes, now I want to share with you just critical indicators that will show you. When God is about to move you Hallelujah. from where you are to the next one. Because of our time, can we start? That's right. Number one. Number one thing that will happen to you is that a word from God will come to you. Hallelujah. Remember where we read? Go back to where we read. First Kings. Chapter 19, or chapter 17, or, 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 or chapter 17, uh, verse 2. Then, the, then the word of the Lord came to him. Yes. Everybody was suffering famine, yeah. but the word of the Lord came to him. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. And when he said, go to brook, right? It was at the brook. It was feeding. This was going on. Hallelujah. Then, verse 7 again. Go to verse 7. Okay, Bible says it happened after a while that the brook dried up because the land had no way. Then look at the next verse. Verse says, Then the word of the Lord came all to him. Guys, everybody could be suffering the same thing. But may the word of the Lord come to you. Amen. Everybody may be wondering, what shall we do? What shall we do? If for you to move to the next land, the word of the Lord must come to you. Bible said there were certain prophets and teachers. But when it was time, it was time for God to move Paul, uh, uh, Barnabas, and Saul to the next level, Bible says, and the word of the Lord came, says, separate unto me, Barnabas and what? And Saul. Everybody could be at the same level, but when the word of God comes to you, it separates you. Move to the next level. Glory be to God forevermore. Somebody may say, Pastor, I have not heard the word of God because you are more secular than spiritual. Uh, we we'll go to your music collection. It's all that we do. No, young people don't like that. I will tell you, when if you complicate your spirit with secular things and you congest your heart with secular things, hearing God will be difficult for you. This, this is a generation whereby we be in church. People will be doing Instagram. When destiny matters have been determined, yeah. and you say, Do you hear? How will you hear God? How many times have I been confused in my own personal life that when I came to church, something was said? Yes. Something was. That even sometimes I remember one day I came to church, to church. It was choir singing when I got my answer. Because his house is a house of lights. Yes. Actually, if you pray before you come to any service, say, Father, as this man speaks, Father, speak through him to me. I guarantee you, something will be said that day that will shift your life. 
I remember one day, I can't remember, Sha was not in that service. You were, I, I, we were in the UK, and many years ago, and uh, my life has come to, to stop. You were in that service? Yeah, okay. I can't remember when she was in that service. But you, do you go to church? Okay. 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 So, I went to this church, and the man was preaching. It was Easter. And he talked about uh, Mary Magdalene and co taking spices to the, be- to the body of Christ after three days in the grave. And Jesus said, them, what are you coming to do with spices? Why are you looking for the dead among the living? Guys, you know what the guy said? He said, some things are dead. Keep taking spices there. If it's dead, bury it and move on. I stood up in that service. I got drunk. I was, you know, UK people, they are very quiet. They were just looking. I wasn't quiet. I'm from Africa. And you're from here. I kept saying, yeah! Hey! Hit me with the word! Ah! I was doing like this. Hey! I became American. I was doing like this. Oh, hot, hot, hot. It was great. You know what? It was on that service that I knew this space has, has come to an end. Because sometimes when we are attached for too long and we are trying to be detached by God, we are still crying. Stop crying. Bob has gone. Stop crying. Mercy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, okay? Stop crying. Bola has gone. They've sacked you. Are you hearing me? They, they have what? Sacked you. S A K. They have sacked you. Move on. They have given you quick notice. Are you hearing me? Stop going back there to bed. God has something new for you. Move on. Move on. It was on that service. I just knew God has something new for me. Guys, I am begging you. And the word of the Lord came to him. It could be when you are studying the Bible. Yes, it could be when you came to church. Yes. It could be while you are praying. Yes. May the word of God come to you. Yes. When God, what the word of God comes to you, it's an indicator that God's about to move you to the next person. Number two. I told you today, fast, fast. Number two indicator is that the brooks will dry. Aha. The brooks will do what? Dry. We read it. I have a fly whether the brooks dried. The brooks will dry. Some businesses in life, they are to act as a startup for where you are going. At a point, grace will leave that business. Somebody is asking, Pastor T, how do you know that the brook has dried up? When you don't have the same joy, do the same thing you used to do before. Brook has dried up. When waking up, going to work, it's a body. Now it's like you are, you, are, you are going to lion's den. You are not happy. Don't you understand that grace has lifted? That the brook has dried up? They have sucked you. The brook has dried up. Those who used to like you, they have stopped liking you. Those who used to eat together, they are now planning against you in the same office. The brook has dried up. Wow. Am I getting across to anybody here this morning? The greatest mistake Elijah Kwab, Elijah, Elijah Kwab made there is to keep praying when the brook has dried up. Because it could, it could begin to quote, we serve a God, with you there's nothing impossible. You can do all things. Ah, who are thou, oh man thing? Before Zerubbabel, listen to me, the brook has dried up. Kai, you know why you are not responding? Because you want to keep doing what you are going what you used to do. You want to keep writing a letter to a stupid boy. Yes. To that your stupid boy. Stupid boyfriend. Very stupid. That is a guy you want to keep writing a letter to. And be begging a man. Who can you beg someone to love you? No. It's immaturity that makes you to think you can make a man who doesn't want to stay, stay. Are you hearing me? If a guy says he wants to go, 
Are you hearing me? Even if you are going to cry, don't cry in his presence. Don't cry in his presence. I've told you before in this church, when he wants to go, let him go. Are you hearing me? Because by holding on to a dead body, a living body will not come. Let him go. But don't let him go with the last laugh. After I has told you he wants to go, call him for a meeting. I want to see him. Say so you want to go. Actually, you know, I'm happy that you are going. Because since you came to my life, now so so bad, 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 bad. That's so so bad, bad, bad. Since you came to my life. But the only thing was that I was walking towards you with the love of God. But God told me that you are a useless man. <laughs> you are a very useless man. That was a day I was reading the Bible. I was talking to him. Oh. I came to a place in Matthew chapter 7. He said, do not give holy thing to dogs. I didn't know you are a dog. Bible said, do not cast holy things. Your pearl before a swine. I didn't know you are a swine. I'm a precious daughter of God. You don't deserve me. Bye bye to bad. All the bad, bad people we used to see, I see them no more. All the bad, 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 bad people I used to eat with, I eat no more. All the bad, bad places I used to go, I Hallelujah. Let them go. Are you hearing me? Yes, the brook has dried. Yes, you know what some of you will do when the brook has dried? You will try to dig well beside it. Let us put, let us try. The brook has dried. Because there was no rain. It wasn't being serviced. It has dried. Let it go. God has a new brook for you. After that, that's when God said, now go to a widow of Zarephath. I prepared her to feed you. If you don't leave the brook, you won't see new opportunities. So when doors begin to close, unusually, it's an indicator. You get what I'm saying? Number three. Are you getting something here this morning? Number three indicator is very simple. It's like the antithesis of the, of the, of the second. When you begin to see certain provisions, yeah. yeah, it's also an indicator. God said, go to Brook, share it, right? He said, look, go, go, no, go, go back and read it. Verse 2, and the one came to me, okay, then verse 3, what? It says, go away from here and turn eastward and hide what? At Brook, what? Share it, which flows into Jordan. What? The, the next line, and it will be that you shall drink water from the brook. I have commanded the ravens to feed you what? There. Did you see that? Another indicator that there's a shift in your life. You begin to see unusual supply. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brook, natural flow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Raven, supernatural flow. Yes, sir. Raven is known to be extremely stingy animal. Yes, a very... The, ravens don't give, they take. Right. If you have not seen ravens before, <laughs> something happened to me one day. I was in, um, with, uh, with, I was in uh, Florida. I was, uh, went to a particular, what do you call that place? Uh, Bush Garden. And I was eating something. You know what I mean? I was just eating. I can't remember what I was eating. From behind came this fear from my hand. Collector and left. Left a scratch. See Satan. It was not Satan. It was a raven. Collected and left. Ravens take, they don't give. But God said, This raven will give to you. I pray for somebody here today. That in the mighty name of Jesus, people that don't help people will help you. People that you have never heard that they help people. You will break that record. 
people that people that have record of being stingy when it comes to your case god will open up their hearts in the mighty name of jesus christ what is what what is the nature of man in the presence of the living god say ravens don't give it's because supernatural has not touched raven when they say somebody doesn't give no 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 because god has not touched the person that's right are you hearing me? Yes, yes, yes. Well, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to excite you with this message. I'm trying to show you indicators. Because some of you have seen certain favor flowing your way. You don't know it's an indication of what God wants to do. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you something. When you are staying with your uncle or you are living in a rented apartment, then certain money begins to flow, flow to your hand. It's not time to move from two bedroom to three bedroom. It's time to begin to build your own. So unusual money flowing to your hand will be an indicator that it's time to move shift from be a tenant to be a landlord do you get what I'm trying to say right now you are a single person, some, some money begins to come to your hand, don't go and change phone and buy two phones one 1.2 million, that one 1.5 million and you are working like this, no, no you don't need that, when that money begins to come to your hand, is it possible that God is telling you to start a new business could that be a capital that God is giving you for another thing God wants to do in your life let me tell you if you spend money on what you don't need, a time will come when you will need what to come by. Yes, Are you hearing me? So you must always ask, when you see unusual flow, God, what is the purpose of this? When you see unusual revels, give it to you. You need to ask, God, is it for consumption or is it for a project? Yeah. Hey, why are you going for holiday? What did you do? No, no, what did you do? Which holiday was been of that? Because all your friends are going for summer. You want to go for summer. And your children are pushing you because their friend went for summer. They too must go for summer. Which summer? What has he done in life? What has he achieved? What is summer rising for? You go to summer from what falls over from the top. Yes, sir. You don't dig to the pot to go to summer. Yes, sir. I got there. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So you can snap some stupid pictures in Paris and post to those who don't like you. Let me tell you, when your hand is full of oil, people will lick it. But if your hand is full of blood, you are on your own. It's when it's good that they celebrate you. Let the temple drop. That's why you will know that there's nobody on your side. May God help you. Amen. You better invest your money away. Yes, sir. When you begin to see something on you, because there's a season life of a man, sir. Yes. That money will just be coming. Money will just be coming. Yes. Don't spend at that rate, oh. Because another season is coming. Yes. When things will dry. So when you see unusual flow, is it not the same man that fell from the brook that the brook dried up later? Please, when some money begins to flow to your hand, God, what is this purpose? It could be that a shift is coming. It could be that a big opportunity coming. That if you don't use that money well, when that opportunity comes, you won't have what it takes to take advantage of that opportunity. You get what I'm saying? It's an indicator. Can I tell you number four now? Let me tell you number four. Number four, indicator. There are some unusual opportunities begin to come your way. Yeah. Unusual opportunities begin to come. Opportunities will begin to come your way. It's an indicator. I want to ask you, was everybody being fed by raven? Was everybody sent to the, to the, to the widow of Zarephath? When you begin to see unusual doors being opened to you, being open to you, people you've never met before welcoming you to their homes, people you've never met before going out of the way to do you good, it's an indicator. Somebody hearing me right now? And I pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, May God send unusual open doors to you. Amen. You know what he said? He said, I'm the one that opens and no man shuts. Hallelujah. 
May the Lord say to you, open doors. Amen. And I'm, I'm not praying this prayer from the top of my head. I am praying it from the bottom of my heart. Amen. From the bottom of my heart. Because if you have never been stranded before, you don't know what opportunity means. Guys, brothers and sisters, trust me, I have been stranded. What are you talking about? That your phone will not ring for a week. Nobody will remember you. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the course begin to come in. May the opportunity begin to come your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hear in my spirit that the Lord is giving some of you choices. It will give you choices. Open doors for that. You have to choose between this and that, between this and that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look, listen, when they say somebody is not married, sometimes because, because opportunity to marry has not come. You cannot marry yourself now. If somebody is not brilliant, who told you that they are not brilliant? I'm giving them the opportunity. Let me tell you something. The blessing of God will make you rich. But the favor of God will give you opportunities. That's what happens with favor. Are you hearing me? It's not that you don't have capacity. There is no opportunity. If some people are given opportunity, you'll be shocked at what they can do. Are you hearing me? Those who play for Nigeria are not the best footballers. There is a guy under the bridge in Area 10. If you give him the same opportunity, you'll be shocked. Are you hearing me? The people who will hear their names today are singers worldwide. They are not the best singers. There is a, a lady in the village who is Pandi Yam. When she's singing, as she's, she's grinding pepper, if you hear her voice, the dead will nearly come alive. But there's no opportunity. May God give you platforms. Yeah. May God give you platforms. Yeah. May the Lord God Almighty give you platforms. Yeah. Give you opportunities. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, a, 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 a lot of people always see, when you realize these things, it will humble you. It will, it's a shift. When, you, when all of a sudden, big people begin to invite you for a meeting. Don't you think that God is about to do something in your life? When they invite you to come and sit in a meeting that you are not qualified to sit. Can't you see God is opening a door? Are you hearing what I'm talking about right now? When those power that be call you for counseling, Pastor T, come and talk to us. Can't you see God opening a door? And I pray for you. As this doors open, may you be here wisely. It's an indicator that God is shifting. Don't you know, as soon as they called Joseph, that Pharaoh has sent for you, he saw an opportunity. He changed. He shaved because he knew my shift is near. Do you get what we are saying right now? Can I tell you the last indicator? Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. What do we say number one is? Number two? Number three? Number four? Oh, yes, sir. sir. sir, sir. Number one, half, sir. Number two, half, sir. Number three, half, sir. Number four, half, sir. Number four, half, sir. Number five. Number Number five. And I round up on this. To know that you're about to shift the witness of other people around you. Yeah. There were certain prophets and teachers in the church, in Antioch. Barnabas, Manaim, he mentioned all their names. As they began to pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate to me what? Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I've given to them. That prophecy could not have come through Barnabas and Saul now. He will say, separate me and Barnabas. He will separate me and Saul. It must have been a third party. Are you hearing me? So what is the witness of people around you? Is it for not that somebody, uh, Tunde, do you think, I mean, somebody just wants to look at you. Somebody, uh, Tunde, don't you think you need to start your own business? I'm not saying act immediately. Another person will witness again. Where you don't know people before. Somebody will just, uh, don't you think you need to have your own consultants? Are, are you hearing me? What is the witness of spiritual people around you? Some of you, they've told you several times that you are supposed to be in full-time ministry, but you have refused out of fear. 
Now you pray before you left the house that if it is true, let it be confirmed today. Now God has sent me to you to confirm it. There is a call on your life. I don't know who I'm talking to. It's not a partial call. It's a full-time call. Are you hearing me? Yes, if you don't attempt to move in that direction, listen, it will never happen. The garden in Eden didn't just appear. I would say God planted a garden in the east of Eden. It was planted. It didn't appear. Everything was spoken into existence, but that was planted. Ministries are planted. Churches are planted. Businesses are planted. Get out from here and plant something. Say amen to that. Yeah. Get out from here and plant something. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? What are the witnesses of prayer around you? Everywhere. Everywhere. I, you know, I have never in my life before been confused about anything. Nothing. Nothing is interesting to me. Nothing. I've told you. You want to be a billionaire? Honestly, I'm happy for you. When God blesses you, bless me. <laughs> I'm happy for you. I want to have this, have that. Honestly, I am very, very happy for you. And may you have them all. Amen. You want to be the governor? You want to be whatever you want to be? Whatever you want to be, you shall you. May God be. Whatever you want to be, may you be. Amen. Honestly. But for me, I have never, I want to be a pastor. Pastor. Are you hearing me? Pastor. P A S T O. Are you hearing me? Pastor. I'm not, from, look, I told from secondary school, when we were in secondary school, they would bring uh, preachers, these itinerary preachers, to come and preach to us. When the, where we are still on the assembly line, when the woman is going, I will escape and go and carry her bag and see her off to the gate. They will pray for me. People will come to come and preach in my school as a 13, 14 year old. I remember when the bishop, one bishop, one Anglican bishop came to visit our, our school. Had a beautiful badge. And I had, in those days, the higher denomination in Nigeria was one naira. I talk about 1970 something. I brought, please, I finished secondary school in 1984. You are not born. Don't be looking at me like that. I, I, you think we are age based because, we are, because I'm talking to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like I was telling them, I had this little talk with the children church teachers yesterday. I said, if I have a child now, I cannot allow the child to call me daddy. What for? Grandpa, who? Because I bore you. <laughs> what kind of arifi is that? Yo, I'll give back to a child and now come to be daddy. Daddy for what is your daddy? <laughs> My son can be your daddy. So you call Joshua daddy. You call me grandfather. You know, because I gave back to you, doesn't mean anything. I am granddaddy. What is that? What is that for? Don't tell me that kind of thing. So between the house, just look at me and say, Grandpa, yeah, we can be talking. Not that we say that daddy for what? At what age? Grandpa, let's go. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I. People were giving. One couple, one couple. I pull out one area. Note, I dropped. We are talking about the days. They used to sell a bottle of Coke for two couple. Yes, two yes. couple. Five couple, you buy rice yes. and beans and plantain with a bottle of Coke. You will, you will, you will, your, your friend will queue up to be giving them sports. You never experienced that, right? You didn't go to the school I went. I dropped. That was my desire. Are you hearing me? Yes. When we had matriculation in school, people came, man, no work came, we were giving uniform to people, people were giving uniform to people. You know where I went? I went to the Gideon. Those who do the Bible. That's Gideon's, that's why I killed. I collected the Bible. Go and find my nickname on campus. Pastor. Pastor. In fact, there was a time I won Mr. I won't tell you, you know. I, yeah, I won one Mr. something. I was still what? Pastor. I saw they mentioned my name, the whole erupted pastor. In fact, they voted for me not because of physique, more of because of pastor. <laughs> I've never been confused what I wanted to be. Uganda, I'm trying to say right now. And the witness of everybody around me 
has been deceived. Ah, you see in Abuja, Pastor T, what are you doing here looking for a job? What job are you looking for? Are you going to waste the grace of God on your life? They will go. Be your own blessed memory. Okay, say, Baba T, you bank, 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 you you bank, you bank, you you bank, you bank, you 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 bank, you you has God not been finished before you got the job in the bank? You have a grace on your life, on your life, you don't waste it. Every witness of so several. What are they saying about you? As they minister to the Lord, the Lord said, separate to me. What is the witness about you? The gift and calling of God. They are without repentance. If you will follow those indicators, you will arrive at where God wants you to be. May God bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's a shift coming your way. When the brooks dry up and there's no love lost for you, what are you doing there? Don't stay where you are tolerated. Go to where you are celebrated. Move on. Glory be to God forevermore. And so my father and my God, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you for a major turnaround. Everything that the enemy meant for evil. My father, let there be a turnaround. For those whose brooks have dried up, I pray for a new direction. Another dimension of grace. May it come over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody came here this morning confused, wondering, God, what am I to do with my life? May the light of heaven shine over your life. May you encounter the word of God afresh. Hey! And some of you, God has spoken to you before now. May you come back again. May the reminder of it come afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be stuck to where you are. By this time next year, may people look for you where you are and not find you there. Because you have shifted. Because you have moved in the name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer circle this mountain too long. In the name of Jesus Christ. I give you praise my father. I honor your name my king. I honor you my daddy. Blessed be your name Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. We are starting very soon. Be seated. All eyes closed. Please quickly. I want to make an altar call. This morning.